So last week, I talked about how Republican lawmakers across the country at town halls are getting lambasted by their constituents because they're putting forth egregious policy positions that are harmful to their very constituents who they're supposed to be representing. So, for example, I mean, many of their constituents are concerned that they're still planning to repeal the Affordable Care Act, even though they've proposed no adequate replacement. So with that being said, I'm happy to report that this is still going on. They're still receiving hell and backlash and boos across the country and we're getting a more clear picture uh, as to how this is impacting them and they hate it so enjoy just by watching the very end of republican congressman jason chavitz's town hall you can tell how it all went the utah republican was also booed before he even said a word when he took the stage and in the midst of the event in the Salt Lake City suburb of Cottonwood Heights. Easy, easy, please, please, come on. Come on, we're better than this. The kind of reception he's not accustomed to in a reliably Republican state and in a district he won with about three quarters of a vote. Republican politicians facing fiery backlashes at Republican town halls from Utah to Tennessee at this town hall sponsored by the college Republicans at Middle Tennessee State University in Murfreesboro, much anger that the town hall auditorium only had a capacity for 78 people. We've had previous events where we were let in even though there were fire codes and we sat on the stairs. If we don't get it, shut it down! Inside, three state legislators and Congressman Diane Black, the current acting chair of the House Budget Committee. We're going to um, repeal the Affordable Care Act and we're going to replace it with something that is going to be good for the American people. For the most part, that statement didn't go over so well. I, I can't put all my trust in someone saying, we're going to make a plan, but we've had six years and we don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good question. Besides the, the, the quote that was by the president that if you like your plan, you can keep it, which was one of the greatest lies of, the, of our oh, time. Oh, get it up. Get um, on the to the question. Was, the second was that the Republicans don't have a plan. As a matter of fact, um, Paul Ryan had a plan even before the Affordable Care Act. Um, Where was it? Even for some of the people in the crowd who don't like Obamacare, unhappiness, there's no new plan ready to go. You're sitting in the chair. What's the hold up? The hold up is that we want to do it right. This past weekend, California Republican Congressman Tom McClintock left his town hall early. A gauntlet of police surrounding him, offering him protection after he too found he had plenty of angry constituents. Now, my favorite part about that is that I love how their constituents are yelling at them and basically fact-checking them in real time. And if they are saying something that is wrong, they just yell bullshit. Oh, give it up. Get on to the question. Now, imagine if we had a mainstream media that did this to uh, politicians. They allow politicians to just drone on, unchecked. Uh, they can espouse false things. Uh, they can just straight up lie. And they go unchecked a lot of the time. So, imagine if... The mainstream media did this then we wouldn't have to have constituents do this but nonetheless i think this is great now i want to share with you a little bit more from uh, diane black's uh town hall i have to have coverage in order to make sure that i don't die there are people who have cancer that have that coverage that have to have that coverage to make sure that they don't die and you want to take away this coverage and have nothing to replace it with as a christian my whole uh, uh, philosophy in life is pull up the unfortunate. Yes. Okay. So the individual mandate, that's what it does. The healthy people pull up the sick. Yes. We are effectively punishing our sickest people. Mm -hmm. And I want to know why not, instead of fix what's wrong with Obamacare, why don't we expand Medicaid and, and make, have everybody have the insurance? So there's nothing I love more than people getting involved in the political process. And I think that part of me wanting to start this podcast to begin with was to encourage people to pay attention and get more involved. So what I want you to do is go to your representative's website and find out when they're doing a town hall. And I want you to be there. I don't care if they're Democrat. I don't care if they're Republican. You need to go there. And you need to voice your concerns because you are paying for their salary. And if you are paying for their salary through your tax dollars, then you deserve adequate representation. Yes, you. 
So please find out when your representative or senator is holding a town hall meeting and show up and hold them accountable like these folks are doing here. I think it's great. And here's one other thing I want to say. I don't want to just encourage you to get involved by showing up to town halls, even though I think this is crucial. I want people to really consider running for Congress. If you think that your congressperson is just so corrupt, so far gone, that nothing you can say or do is going to convince them to actually represent the interests of you because they're so beholden to their corporate interests, I want you to run for office. You can do that through Justice Democrats. I think that would be a great way to do it. But if you run for office, you can make a difference. And look, I, I'm not just saying that to be corny and, you know, espouse a platitude. Why can't you run for office? I mean, look at some of the people who we've elected. Louis Gohmert. This guy probably has the IQ of a turtle. And no offense to turtles. Actually, I think that may be incorrect. I think turtles are probably smarter than Louis Gohmert. And I have no idea why I just brought up a turtle. But I mean, <laughs> the president is Donald Trump. I think that his IQ is probably the equivalent of four people combined. So if these idiots can run and become successful in politics, then why can't you? Why can't you? What's the excuse? If you have any inclination that you think you would be good and you could represent the people, then do it. Do it. You know, don't think about it. Just do it. Run. You know, find out now how to file papers because 2018 is coming up. So you need to start looking into that right now. Do it. You know, if you're progressive, you can make a change. So look, continue to show up and give them hell. Uh, make calls to their offices every single day and look, run for office. This is us getting involved. This is the political revolution that Bernie Sanders catalyzed actually coming to fruition. We're making a difference and they are accountable to us because we're holding them accountable. And the minute that we slack off, they're going to go back to doing terrible things. So keep up the pressure. And look, this is great. I hope this story puts a smile on your face because this made me really happy. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.